might find me on the ground, you might see me around You could catch me in the lab with my speakers loud Never been one for commercial sound I'll concentrate the music, independent, proud Aesthetic and elect is a label found Representing our cause, hold the applause Listen in as I begin to get the message across I've never been a bitch, I've never been a fraud Bringing MC to light, tearing down the facade I'm Gibbs, this is uh, my co-host Ziggy B Ziggy B, Ziggy Braun, nice and, to see um, y'all Today we're going to be uh, reviewing Evidence's new album, uh, Whether or Not. Uh, we have an interview with the artist himself, Ziggy Braun, and as well as uh, our review of our, our uh, six-packs here. Yeah, we got, a, we got two six-packs. Uh, we got Golden Road, Ride On, and what is that? Flying Dog, Flying Snake Dog. Dog. Snake Dog, 20 Years and Beyond. It's, Ooh, boy. Sounds like a hoot. Can't wait for that. <laughs> a hooty hoot. A hooty hoot. <laughs> yeah, so basically, Beers in the Air is um, it's a show uh, we're going to bring straight out of our studios here at Aesthetic Intellect Records. Um, just where we review music, we uh, spotlight local artists, and uh, we review a beer. We uh, drink a six-pack to ourselves throughout the show. Tell you what we think about it at the end. We either love it or hate it, but either way, it's getting drank it. Basically, the perfect trifecta, I'd have to say. Right. Beer, friends, music. What a better time, right? No no better time. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's open these let's up. Let's crack one of these open. I think I'll start with the, uh, the Golden Road. Oh, you've, you've got multiple, uh, multiple flavors over there, I Just guess? Just one single flavor. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, that's that was the brand. Gotcha. Golden uh Golden Road Ride On Golden Road Ride On IPA. Made in the lovely uh Southern California city of Los Angeles. Hmm. Oh boy, I got me a, a snake dog IPA. Seven point one percent alcohol volume. It's got a nice IPA smell to it. I'm liking what I'm tasting so far. I like I like I like mine so far too, but I could tell that uh, I might start slurring a little bit by the end of this one. I think <laughs> after about half of that, maybe we'll see. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> should make for a great review towards the end. It should get really interesting the later into it we get. All right. So today, what we're going to talk about first is uh, evidence. Uh, we're, after that, we'll go on to the interview. We'll. Uh, Give you a sneak peek of the uh, Yay Old Gents album. Um, Yay Old Gents is myself and uh, Ziggy Braun. We um, are both self-producing everything, self-engineering. We write our own lyrics, no ghostwriters here. And I'm really, really <laughs> excited for you guys to hear this song. It's something I personally feel pretty attached to, I think. Um, I don't really want to give anything away just yet, but I think you guys will like it. Ton, I mean, tons of creativity went into it. I oh, yes. Yeah. From uh, the selection of sample for the beat to the lyrics and uh, even our feature. Our feature was, was pretty great. I'll give you a hint. That's what she said. <laughs> That's all you guys get. You got to wait. You got to wait. It's coming, though. It's coming. So, um, evidence, evidence, in case you guys don't know who evidence is, evidence is, uh, from a group called dilated peoples. Um, he's been around for years now. You've probably heard of dilated peoples. If you don't know of them either from a song with Kanye West, um, I can't for sure remember the name of the song, but the, it's the song that with the chorus that goes, uh, I can't live my, I, I can't live my, I can't live my life this way. That's, um, that was probably one of the first times I heard of Kanye. I actually thought at first that was a Kanye song because that was back before I was even really into, uh, the whole indie hip hop scene. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I mean, they, they helped put Kanye on the map. They, you know, Kanye put them on the map ultimately. And, um, I mean, both great artists. Uh, evidence. He um, he uh, has some solo stuff. He's got the Weatherman LP. Uh, Cats and Dogs. Cats and Dogs was his first uh, under Rhyme Slayers. Mm -hmm. He's got the Layover. Um, the signing of Evidence to Rhyme Slayers because I I'm a huge Rhyme Slayers fan. Every, everybody that knows me is kind of just like 
you true know story. What, you know what Gibbs listens to because it's pretty much the Rhyme Sayers crew. I went to go see Atmosphere one time. He wouldn't talk to me for like three months. <laughs> little over exaggeration, but true story. I, I was a little salty. The salt is still there, <laughs> definitely. It's like Salt Bay trickling on me right now. Just it's raining salt on me. A little salt down the elbow. It's just. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge Slug fan. Atmosphere yeah. is is a great group. And they never come to California. And mm-hmm. I was literally just telling you that yeah. not too long before that. And sure enough, he got a free ticket. <laughs> not He didn't even have to pay to go see it. Just someone was like, hey, you want to go see Atmosphere? And he's like, yeah, why okay. not? <laughs> right? <clears throat> so back to evidence. Um, evidence, signed to Rhyme Sayers a couple yeah. years ago. Debut album with Rhyme Sayers, Cats and Dogs. It was a great album. Um, what I what I really liked about it was um, evidence. He he's not the typical rhyme sayer's mold. Mm. You know he's he's got that real uh, West Coast uh, underground hip hop style. Yeah. And rhyme sayer's is kind of just uh, a little bit different. You know, but he he meshed well with the other artists. He had a lot of great songs on there. Features with uh, more rhyme sayer's artists like Slug, Aesop Rock, uh, Greaves. Uh, and a few more here and there. Um, my favorite song from that album was um, Late for the Sky featuring Slug. I don't know if you heard that song, but great song, great song. It's just got that mellow vibe, and that's why one of my favorite songs from this album is my one of my favorite songs from it is because it kind of gives you that same same sort of feel from it. And I don't know, that's just that's what I like. That's what I look to music for is that kind of mm-hmm. vibe and. Yeah, I gotta I say before it. before we you know really started talking about doing this interview, you know I I heard of evidence of course, but I never really took the time out of my day to listen to him, and deciding to do this and deciding to do it on the new you know evidence whether or not tape, amazing choice. I was oh, so yeah. glad I got the chance to listen to him. It's gonna be definitely one that's you know on repeat on my CD player. For a while, yeah. So. I mean, it's there's not much for me to say other than it was it was a great album, yeah. well rounded. It's uh, good enough to sit there and listen to all the way through, and even if it if it repeats, it's it doesn't feel mm-hmm. old. Yeah. You know, one the best thing I'd say about this album is the fact that he his style is is a very unique style to mm-hmm. where he could have released this album in the mid two thousands. And it still would have just, and it still would have been, yeah. still would have been nice, you know. Mm-hmm. Like people listen to evidence for his his specific sound, and even though not every album of his sounds the same, he could definitely fit in at any point in time. Yeah, like mid two thousands, I don't think you would have heard a little Uzi Vert song getting popular. <laughs> it was just a different time. We were listening to different stuff, and uh, I mean that's that's neither here nor there. That's for another <laughs> for another episode. We'll go into a few, those. Week, few weeks down the road. A few, a few weeks, weeks down, down the road, road. We'll let you know how we feel about Lily Zubert. Um, let's start off with um, what was your favorite song? Honestly, um, my favorite song. What was the name of it? I'm drawing a blank right now. We just talked about this. Uh, By my side too. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. When that song came on. I wasn't really expecting it to be about the content that it was about. And when he started rapping and telling the story of his wife who got breast cancer, I mean, I remember I was driving to work. It was like, you know, probably 7, 10 a.m. Sun's coming up. Sun's in my eyes. That song comes on. And I'm like, damn, wow. Like, it's crazy, you know, just hearing what he had to go through, how you know, it was found out that his wife had breast cancer and he tells it in such a vivid way, you know, through his words. So I think that song hands down was probably the one that stood out the most to me on the album. Yeah, very, very deep and touching. Mm -hmm. My lady losing her hair. I go to sit with her to sit in that uncomfortable chair. Got it. Holding their hand right beside me They bring the chemo out and hook into the ivy The doctor like a dealer way pumping them drugs Hard to watch like this I give a f- if you thug I give a f- if you've seen it all You ain't seen this When the mother of your firstborn son A clinch your fist from the pain From the poison that they pump in the vein Trying to circulate a system Trying to say she ain't sane But she is 
older hip hop and like underground hip hop is you don't run into the problem with people rapping over their their songs Vocals, in the background. Yeah. Mm. That is the worst to me. Yeah. I might not mean much to you guys, but if I go to a show <laughs> and you're rapping over your lyrics, even if you're Drake, I'm booing the fuck out of you. <laughs> I don't care who you are. Don't do that because you know, a, a hip hop head like me, we don't we're not down for that. I'm not down for that. I'll, I'll throw a tomato at you. <laughs> One of uh recently I went to go see um I went to go see Big Lenbo, Joey Badass, and Logic out in Vegas. Mm. And I'll tell you, one of the really cool things about Logic didn't rap over his vocals. Just were the were the was the rest of the the uh, people that performed were they were they having their uh, backing tracks no. in the background? Mm-mm. Oh, okay, well, no. okay. I, I thought you were just referring like as Logic was the only one that didn't. Oh no no, no I'll, yeah oh, I'll, okay. yeah yeah. I mean, it, it helps you get into the show more, you know? Mm. I mean, you're getting that live experience of them performing instead of, like, I don't want to hear, like, fucking Gucci gang playing in the background while you just say, say like, yeah, 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 like, the entire time while your song's just playing, and then yeah. you just rap sometimes. Like I did a... They, these guys wonder why they get punched in the face during yeah. their shows. <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> there was a... Recently, I went to... Um, the Regent Theater to go see Big Boy, and one of the openers was rapping over his vocals. Ugh. And it, it's crazy, too, because it would have been a really kick-ass show because he had, like, a live drummer, a live guitarist. Um, some dude was, like, DJing. Like, it was a really cool set, and then he's just rapping over his lyrics, and there's times when I see him just stop rapping, and the lyrics are still going. I'm like, oh, come. Eh. So was it, it was like someone you never heard of before. Yeah, it was just. So I mean, you, yeah. you, you don't. You're not even riding your own hype train. Yeah. You know, you, you can't just. You don't have pretty much zero credibility, other than like you're <sighs> who's opening for for Big Boy tonight. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you made you made somebody that was there think that you sucked. Yeah. I mean, other than like your performance would have been great if you didn't do that. Like, just don't do that. Moral of the story. <clears throat> just rap over the instrumental. Yeah, just rap your shit, dude. Easy. Go out there, tell a story. Like, be you be the show. Don't like play your, yeah. your songs. You know what I mean? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Yeah, because like I've I've seen like some of your performance, and like you guys were getting up there, and you like you have a lot of energy, and that's what people dig. Like, if you guys just went up there and like just stood there, you know, said some of your lyrics, and then got out of breath and let the track play, like. I had I had so much energy during two shows, no, three shows in particular that I remember that I threw up afterwards because I'm not really physically fit. <laughs> so after getting so, you know, hyped about the show <clears throat> and getting so into the show, you worked yourself up. After the fact, I went and puked. It might have been because I had quite a few beers beforehand, but I think it was also partially because I was getting so hyped. Well, I'm, I mean, beers, I mean, not being in the very best cardiovascular shape yeah. and then being yeah. up there super hyped. Like so I think it was just <laughs> I've been there. Me being a big yeah. guy and a smoker, yeah. It doesn't help me getting yeah. up there and being hyped. Like I I tell my boys when, you know, we're doing performances, I'm like, I'm gonna need help here because oh, yeah. like when I'm sitting down and we're practicing this, I can mm-hmm. hit it. But once yeah, the, when you're, the hype yeah. starts going, oh, I need yeah. to breathe and you the gotta energy pick me of up. the live like, show. Yeah, and, like have your boys yeah. pick you up. Don't yeah. I, like I'm not letting my back and track pick me up. Exactly. Exactly. But I mean Segue into uh, it's, uh, what we do. Yeah. Um, I'm saying coming up next, let's uh, s- start with uh, the man behind the mask, uh, Ziggy Braun. Ziggy B. That's me. <clears throat> Unintentional rhyme. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Trying to be the king like I'm hip hop's Rodney. Trying to keep the peace like I'm hip hop's Gandhi. Concocting fat beats, fatter than the fat sandwiches of the husband of Blondie. So, so double dishes, phony, only more tender than a fucking slab of Kobe. Ooh. Ooh. All right, as we talked about before, we got the, um, the Ziggy Braun interview, the man behind the mask. Um, if, you know, if you know Ziggy Braun, you know who he is. If you don't, you'll find out. One day. One day you may find out. Maybe uh maybe maybe episode twenty five will reveal the man behind the mask. Of season four. Of season four. 
a hundred episodes a season. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So uh, Z- Ziggy Braun, he's a guy I've known for years. Uh, relatively started making music around the same time. Yeah, two thousand nine. Yeah, eight or nine. Probably I think, nine. I think, uh, 2009, I think. You, you guys were a little ahead of me. I was. I was oh nine. Yeah. Uh, you know, I used to record with uh with you and uh your your old group and um at your brother's uh work over off uh industrial over towards um the college mm-hmm. and uh that's pretty much where we got it all started yeah. man like oh yeah uh the monkey house was your previous group <laughs> yeah we're still you know we're still trying to do stuff when we can for yeah, sure a little little more spread out now. yeah i mean pe- yeah, yeah. people have kind of mm-hmm. gone and started new ventures in their life and yeah. i mean it, it, it happens it happens i mean the fact sure. that you kept a, a four-man group together three plus one later well i mean we'll get to that with the yeah. history of it all i mean uh it's groups are tough man yeah um yeah i mean you want to talk about like the the goods and the bads of that and like what kind of led you to the whole uh solo ziggy braun adventure i you know honestly I, I feel like there weren't really any any bads it was i mean it was it was a good time working with them we always came up with just real cool stuff that people didn't really hear too often um you know some of some of my two favorite tracks or my, my two favorite tracks that we actually got the chance to work on um one of them was called the d where the D, the D, <laughs> the dirty D, the desert. Um, but it incorporated, you know, the, the swap back hip hop that I'm just a huge fan of, you know, doing, doing two lines here, three lines here. Somebody else does two lines and just kind of, it's all over the place, you know, and it's, it had that classic hip hop feel. Yeah. And, and then, then out I mean, of, especially if there's good chemistry. Yeah. I mean, chemistry is everything too because mm-hmm. i mean you could throw throw three four people together and they just won't mesh well but i mean yeah. that's that's something you guys did you guys played well off each other yeah and the the cool thing was that we all had different musical backgrounds oh, you know so <laughs> definitely it was definitely i mean you worked together yeah. but it didn't mean that you you guys were the same yeah it's oh no definitely not at all. A, a huge variety of sound and that's what made it so unique yeah and that's what that's what made me that's what made me enjoy excuse me those beers the beers that's are what made me <laughs> that's what made me enjoy working on the D so much was that we uh we got a chance to incorporate some of the metal music that I really grew up with you know mm, not oh, necessarily metal music I, okay, but okay now I, I know exactly what song you're yeah, talking about like yeah that. so basically for those who haven't heard it it's straight up hip hop, just swap back hip hop, just real smooth rhymes and everything. And out of nowhere, um, it goes into this like distorted guitar and it's just like real crazy drums. And it was a cool song. It got real hyped. Um, one one time during the show, I really fucked up my, my hip. It's it's actually one of my favorites that you guys would perform just yeah, because, yeah. Of, because of the energy level. I mean, you and... Uh, you know, like St. Even and uh, other people from the Monkey House, St. Even, uh, yeah. let's, uh, uh, Jimmy the Funksta and uh, Scumdog. Mm. I mean, just the amount of energy you guys brought with that song was just great. Yeah, there was a, there was one time in particular when we were performing that song, and I dove into a crowd that wasn't really a crowd. <laughs> nice. It was basically where the crowd should have been, and the crowd was like on the outskirts of where the crowd <laughs> should have been. And it was like a foot high stage, and I I jump off the stage just getting so hyped, and the floor was kind of slippery. So when I landed, I kind of slipped and just fell on my hip, and slammed my hip bone super hard. So I was just like laying on the ground, just like screaming in the mic, like "Blade, get my man, Blade!" <laughs> I really fucked up my hip though, bad that show, but it was fun. It I mean, was sometimes cool. stuff like that happens. You gotta improvise yeah. and you know mm-hmm. make the best of it. They claim the monkey house, yet they got four tenants. Got a dirty mouth, couldn't clean with four dentists. I'm tormented him by the shit that I've seen. Then I run out of my team, fuck it, I'ma let my pen. Without 
uh, really disclosing a bunch of secrets to the album, uh, kind of give us like a like a a feel for what what what's to expect and when can we expect it. So what what I wanted to do pri- primarily the album is almost all produced by me. Um, I have a few outside producers. Um, one of them, real dope dude, this guy named Steve Spiffler. Um, he does a lot of stuff with this guy, um, Gark Mavigan, um, AKA Mark Gavigan. Um, I met him while I was up in Santa Cruz, both really cool dudes. But, um, I bought, I got, I got one beat from, uh, this dude, Steve Spiffler. And he's just a really cool producer. And, um, you listen to this song the other day and you, it, it fits my style really well. Just real upbeat, kind of fun. Anyways, um, basically what I'm doing with it, I'm, I'm, telling a story of you know i'm not a well-known rapper but in the story it's basically the adventures kind of or the the tale of ziggy braun in a sense and it starts with me kind of hypothetically one day you know well-known rapper in victorville well-known producer in victorville and it it starts that way, and then the the second song basically cuts back to the beginning of my story, and from there, it sort of just tells its way up to the beginning of the album. So it kind of like it starts at the end, and then the second song starts at the beginning, and then it kind of comes full circle. Yeah, it's, I mean, just, that's that's a great concept. I mean, I I remember the first time you told me about this. And I was like, oh, man, like, I can't wait to see how you make it happen. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, keep in mind, you know, it's all, it's all for the most part fictional in a sense, but there's true aspects to it. Like, every, every part of the album is kind of a real thing that I've gone through, sort of, in a sense. But the overall story as a whole is fictional keep that in mind but it's cool it's fun you know it's it's gonna be real interesting kind of just hearing how it all plays out like i said like you said don't want to give too much away you just gotta without gotta giving gotta a ton away drop us a couple bars Ooh, okay the set highly anticipated, my verses just masturbated all over the masses, faces out, the master race, spit that tongue, that state to mix them drums and lace to make the greatest thing that's resonated on the pavement, so innovative, invasive, I'm invading all basements, sustained abrasions, all these tracks are the dopest cuts, clash with the soulless fucks, no rhythm, no rhyme, and no reason, serious with the spit and with the dash comedic, can I keep these lyrics down, I'm diagnosed bulimic, it's floor in the English language, every rap is scenic, I've hit Oxford, Urban, and Merriam-Webster, a couple more years and I'll be the one giving lectures, a king with these rhymes, but perceived as a gesture, when interceptor of them sound waves. Concoct verses in profound waves. All your terms are derogatory. My terms go and tell a story. I'll be rapping well till I'm well into my 40s. And then I rap a couple more with the dogs like corgis. Making love to your years like an audible orgy. You're invited cordially. I'm just not normally this nice and orderly. My conscience forcibly. Extorted tourist fees. Hoarded more lyrics than your average MC. Went to school for hip hop and got my master's degree. Uh, man, I just asked for a sneak peek and he, he, dropped, he dropped the tape hey, on us real quick. <laughs> Sorry, it was it was really hard because every time I took a breath, I sucked in part of my bandana. It's okay, you know I can really see that with just the same hi hat rhythm over and over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. It's 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 been a running gag through the whole show. So I, I track track one goes. Track two goes. But track three, it goes. Nice. No, I'm just kidding. I can't wait to hear that. It's gonna be cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, so when when can we expect that? I'm hoping, ideally, probably by maybe September, August or September. Okay, so in in the summer, early, early fall. Yeah, I wanna I wanna try and release it when it's still warm out. It just seems like a good time to release an album. I mean, you all, 
you always got to have a party, maybe performance stuff like and that, that. You know, that's that's what I'm saying. You know, I want to. I I've always loved backyard shows. Backyard shows are my all time favorite shows. Uh, you could do whatever the ever. Fuck you want. I mean, dude, and it's just it's a cool ass crowd, man. It's just it's fun. It's, so, it's everybody that you usually want there. Yeah, it's... exactly. So if if I could release it while it's still pretty warm out, you know, and up here, you know, it's. When it's dark, it's like the perfect temperature. Even if it's like 110 degrees out during the day, at night, it's perfect, you know? Yeah. So if I if I can get like an August, maybe like a July or August release, I think that'll be cool. I think that'll oh, be yeah. good. good. I mean, the late, it's the sun's out pretty late. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be, well, it's going to be hot, but roughly you do stuff like that in the evening. So it's, yeah. you know... No sweaters, no people outside freezing, just mm-hmm. having a good time, yeah, drinking some saying. some beers and listening to some music. Some good old hip hop, man. Some good old Ziggy Braun. I'm excited. <clears throat> I'm excited. So, um, we, uh, other than your solo stuff, we uh, recently decided to get together for as long as we've known each other. This is the first project we've worked on together, together as, yeah. as as a whole. And I mean, what are we called? Ye old gents, or spell that out for us. Y e space o l d e space g e n t z. Nice. I mean, we kind of just came up with that randomly. I mean, we we're kind of thinking of a name, and uh, you know, we didn't really know what to call ourselves, and uh, it was kind of a cool, creative old. Yeah. Uh, Old English way to say, like, the old guys. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I've had some good nights with old English, <laughs> as we all have. Yes, we have. <laughs> and, um, I mean, there's there's not too much for us to expose uh, about the... Uh, the old Jans album. So uh, I think I, I think the coolest thing about it is that we incorporated beats from both of us. Yeah, you know, because we're fully fully produced by both of us. Yeah, you know, our recording our own stuff. I mean, it's completely homemade. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, you, you've really sparked an inspiration with me that kind of got me back into my studio and uh, well, it's, and it's, it's helped me it's, even inspire our. Keep getting our label running. I yeah. mean, we've got a lot of cool stuff going mm-hmm. on right now. A lot of cool people with uh, that are going to be coming out of here uh, through our label. Yeah, uh, that it's it's going to be an exciting year. Yeah, and it's 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 cool too because um, you know prior to getting together with you, um, you know I was probably writing a verse like every few weeks or something. You know, it was just like a not really coming out too often. But since then, I think I've been doing a verse a week just about i think since the new year it's been a verse a week yeah I'll, I'll find myself coming in here like right when i get off on a friday sitting in here producing like three fucking beats mm-hmm. and uh because i mean i got a lot of people to produce for now like you know running the label you think oh you know just get a bunch of people together to wrap some songs and we'll put them out and market them but i mean, like i totally forgot like man i got a lot of beats to make yeah. for a lot of different <laughs> styles too so like yeah. i'm i'm just trying to build up that uh that archive and um you know let's let's go ahead and end this interview with a little sneak peek of uh, dunder mifflin ooh there we go Get that paper like every day Like every day Trying to make that paper and get hella paid And get hella paid Trying to get that paper like every day Like every day Trying to make that paper and get hella paid And get hella paid 
slaving for the man Trying to adequate my paper month through five, nine to five See the fruits of my labor, defeat my neighbors with the cool shit on the weekend Acting foolish up the cajon, just got home, meet at the stew and we can do this by day I'm pushing parcels by night, I'm pushing faders, I'm pushing away my haters Through positive rhymes, my label, beautiful minds on my grind Doing nothing under the table, pushing these lines, telling my story, putting clothes on the back of my stable Beautiful daughters are the cause for this labor and father, I'm working till I am hurting and still have love that's unrivaled, it's worth it every penny all of these miles I've traveled, this love is timeless, love is priceless Worth every scar from the battles, I steer away from the cattle I'm in love with my mind, that's quite a trait, no debate I am one of a kind, not a lot left on this earth like me That you will find, right at the peak of my existence Thinking never rewind, trying to get that paper like every day Like every day, trying to make that paper and get hella paid And get hella paid Trying to get that paper like every day Like every day Trying to make that paper and get hella paid And get hella paid Farming the beats on Dwight Shrew, compress them into some fine juice Fix the kinks I find, tune then enhance them with some rhymes To that thread level be midnight, golden face this shit nice My cells pitch that's hell lit, smack dab my element The stable stuck in back of mines like a staple stuck in gelatin Bossed up like Michael Scott, every rap spit is elegant I'm the big tuna Making the cheddar like Gouda, belly big like Buddha, dog paddle in the moolah. Gassed up like Kevin's chili, spilt beans like damn, really? On the verge to make a milli, boy, that joke was so silly. That's what she said, work in the office till late in the PM. Found all the rappers and slid in the DM, looking for features, carpe diem. Close the deal and I don't even meet them. Showing up to the wrong show, but I'm lyrically sweet em. The thoughts were bottled up, so I freed them. Went from busting raps in Scranton to busting raps in the Hamptons. Still stacking paper in that Ziggy Brown fashion. Trying to get that paper lock every day. Like every day, trying to make that paper and get hella paid. And get hella paid, trying to get that paper like every day. Like every day, trying to make that paper and get hella paid. And get hella paid. What I, really, what I want to ask you could get controversial for people. Let's, if you don't agree with the guy, feel free in the comments to let him know. <laughs> Top five all time. Ooh. 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 Okay, this is, this is always a tough one for me. I've heard this one time and time again. Always, always tough. But... No particular order? Um, yeah, just your top five. Okay, just I top mean, five. You, you can rank it one to five, like how, who you feel is number one. Okay. Get, get, get these common comments I'm gonna, really I'm gonna, going. I'm going to just do top five, no particular order. Okay? Andre 3000, for sure. I mean, member of Outcast, Love Below, everything he did on Equemini. The, the, All ev- so fucking ev- cool. Everything he touches. Yeah. Um, Eminem, I have to say, not necessarily his recent stuff. Wasn't a big fan of Revival. I mean, th- this is this is all time. Yeah. So, I mean... Exactly. One one song can really make you or break you. Yeah. So, I mean, like... Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if this was, like, top five right now, Eminem probably wouldn't yeah. be Yeah, so there. of all time, I gotta say Eminem. So, Andre 3000, Eminem... One of my personal favorites, Asher Roth. I fucking love everything he's done. Asleep in the Bread Isle, Roth EP, Greenhouse Effect Volume 1 and 2, the Just Listen EP, which was before Asleep in the Bread Isle, Paps and Jazz. Everything is so cool. Uh, it seems like you're pretty uh, pretty in touch with Asher. I'm a, I'm Asher. a big Asher we, we, fan. We I'm, might have to do some Asher just because like, it I'm seems dead. like you, you could go for a while. You know, I've, 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 see, I've seen the dude live, you know, three, four times. I've met him once. I went to go see Action Bronson, and Asher Roth was chilling in the audience. Mm. Cool dude. Um, whew. That's, break. that's three. I know, this so is we where got, it gets, We got Andre 3000, this is Eminem, where it gets tough. Asher Roth. Oh, I hate this question, man. It's hard. I really he, hate it's this almost, question. It's almost like you don't want to offend your your favorite artist um, by not putting them on here. I gotta say, Dr. Dre. 
Got to say Dr. Dre. Really love everything he's done. Um, this might be different tomorrow, but today, this is what it is. I'm fucking with Afro Man. Fucking with Afro Man. <laughs> I'm fucking with Afro Man. Dude puts on a crazy show. He, I, I feel like he's like the Weird Al Yankovic, but not doing covers. Like, imagine what Weird Al Yankovic is to like rock. I feel like Afro Man is that to hip hop almost. Well, I mean, to to be almost like a comedy rapper, mm-hmm. to still have jams that you could sit there and just just jam because they're they're good. <laughs> like, that's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to do. It's dude. It's hard to make a serious song. I, I like to have people jam to it. So I, I mean, feel like, like Afro Man isn't going to be in my top five tomorrow. I mean, he's one of my favorites. Don't get me wrong. But tomorrow it would probably be somebody different. I mean, so we got Andre Three Thousand, Eminem, Asher Roth, Doctor Dr. Dre, Dre Afro Man, and the Afro Man. <laughs> Fucking with it. Before we end this, I saw Afro Man in Santa Cruz one time. Dude showed up two hours late to the show, so the concert promoter just let us go. He was like, leave, go do your thing downtown, come back in two hours, we'll let you guys back in. Went to the Red Room in Santa Cruz, big shouts to the Red Room in Santa Cruz. Met Gerard Butler, he was out there. Oh, what? Yeah, he was out there filming Chasing Mavericks, he was there. So we left Afro Man because he was two hours late, went to the Red Room, to go grab a drink, met Gerard Butler. I gave him a fizz bump, and I was like, hey, what's up, dude? He was like, hey, mate. And no, he's not Australian. I forgot what he is, but we just said what's up. Left, went back to go see Afro Man. Afro Man gave me a fist bump. Fucking auctioned off an empty 40 ounce of Colt 45 for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> an it, empty was, one. it was so cool. He got cool. five bucks off his glass it, it, bottle. Empty, empty. That he can get like five cents for it, the recycling. Sick show. And he he just like plugged in his iPod and played the instrumentals and then and like fucking jammed on his like double header Gibson. It was <laughs> so, no, it was so cool. That sounds insane. It, it was awesome, dude. It was such a cool show. It sounds like a good time. So um. I mean, keep in mind, people, this, this is his top five. Don't tear him apart if you don't agree with him, but definitely let him know what your top five is because mine definitely doesn't agree with his. <laughs> let's let's just put it that way. And like I said, that's my top five today. That's what I'm thinking of right now. Maybe so, it's um, different tomorrow. Where, um, Ziggy Braun, where can these people find uh, some Monkey House stuff, some Stoop Kid stuff, some some solo stuff? Every Everything... Is on bandcamp.com right now. If you just go to bandcamp.com, search the monkey house. <laughs> it's gonna be right here. I'm right, gonna have it right there. Right in this general area <laughs> between us two. Bandcamp.com slash the monkey house. The monkey house T H A. We're grammatically incorrect. <laughs> um Bandcamp, uh, SoundCloud, a lot of the stuff's on SoundCloud, like a lot of the stuff we've been releasing recently, but it's not on a tape, is on SoundCloud. Um, again, soundcloud.com slash the monkey house, T H A. T H A M O N K K E Y. Monkey and house are spelled how they're supposed to be. T H A is the tha. There you go. Thanks for tuning in. If you're still here, if not, then uh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's uh, get to the gist of it, man. When I came up with the concept for this show and I pitched it to you, I was like, let's let's make a little like podcast YouTube series where we sit here, we talk music, local hip hop, yeah. interview some cool people, and drink a fucking six pack six pack of beer that's you know not your everyday like Coors Light or yeah. Bud Light or something and. Let people know about the beer, because, I mean, there's a lot of beers out there. And I, I got to say, if if you guys, if if you live in the desert, if you live in the 760, and you want some beer that you've never seen before in your life, go to the Chevron in Apple Valley at the corner of Apple Valley Road and Yuckaloma. Insane selection of beer. They have stuff I've never even heard of before. I found Pliny the Elder there. One one time. We'll get that for the show. 
<laughs> Pliny the Elder, you guys know what Pliny the Elder is. If you know what it is, amazing beer. I paid, I don't want to say what I paid for a pint of it. Stupid amount or? Yeah, because you can't find it up here. Like, it's it's like a. So it's, it's, it's a Chevron. And whoever's running that Chevron knows their shit. Knows their shit. They're Frank. They're cool people. Frank. Cool Frank, people. Frank, if you're watching, Frank, I'm sure my boy will let you know you're getting a shout out to your beer selection <laughs> right now on Beers in the Air. Right here. Beers in the Air. On YouTube. <clears throat> well, I mean, uh, dude, Snake Dog, 20 years and beyond. I only put three beers down. I mean, I'm about to crack my fourth, but, man, I'm numb in the face. I'm feeling real loose. I'm coming into my, my own over here on the on this uh, podcast, and it was good. Yeah, I, I can't complain, dude. I would I would try it again. And I, I want to say, dude, I've, I've had a lot of stuff from Flying Dog before, and they, overall, they have a really good selection of beer. But one of the, uh, (laughs) (laughs) as the warden, one of the, uh, one of the main reasons I selected it, a lot of people might get mad at me for this, but I, I literally did judge a book by its cover. Okay. I saw it looked interesting. I got it. That's what I do with beer. I like, I like trying new beers. I like tasting new beers, so on and so forth. But one of the main reasons that I picked Flying Dog, especially for the first, you know, episode of the show, was because the artist, uh, I, I believe his name is pronounced Ralph Stedman. He did he did the art for uh, Hunter S. Thompson's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. If any of you guys have ever seen Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas or read Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, you'll know that the art in the book the art on the cover of the DVD and everything is really just unique and just abstract and just really weird and interesting. He's the one who does the art for flying dog. And I, it's, it's just awesome because every, every different type of beer from flying dog has its own unique Ralph Stedman art piece to it. So it's cool because it's, it's, Honestly, kind of like every time you buy a beer, you're getting a piece of Ralph Stedman art, which is history in itself, you know? I mean, if, if you are if you were going in and you're saying, I'm going to buy the coolest looking six pack of beer that I can find. I mean, it's got, it's got cool designs. It's, it's got some it, weird like doodle, almost like a doodle snake on it with like a ton of eyes. Cool, uh, cool uh, font for the, the text. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it looks cool. It's appealing. Definitely catches your eye. Whoever whoever decided they're going to put this guy as the uh, designer for amazing for their logo, idea. I mean, yeah, it definitely is a great marketing strategy. Probably oh, yeah. caught your eye, like, oh, hey, yeah, look at look at, look at well, this it's, one. It's it's been catching my eye for years. I've been I've been I've been buying Flying Dog for years, for you know, I'm in my late twenties now, but I've probably been buying it since I was you know, 22, 23 or something. So it's a good beer and, you know, golden road right here too. I've had, um, I've had the wolf among weeds IPA. Um, they have a mango session IPA. I think it is. And golden road never disappoints either. Um, this one I've never seen before. And again, it honestly, just the, the box that it came in alone just caught my eye and honestly i kind of prefer drinking beer out of cans so that's another reason why i kind of picked it out and it's i'm a big bottle guy yeah for some reason it's it just seems smoother to drink out of a Mm -hmm. bottle i feel like less of my my beer goes from out of my mouth back into the can out of the bottle and i don't know it's just it's it feels like it gets it it stays colder yeah yeah i'm a bottle guy I, th- I think what it is for me, um, it's kind of interesting too. Um, you know, I've I've brewed a little beer myself, came out came out pretty interesting. Um, but you know the bo- the bottle the bottles alone kind of affect how the beer sort of ferments and everything. Kind of those are the thing. But it's it's weird because I've had a lot of I've had a lot of beers where I could only find it in bottles, 
But as soon as I find it in a can, I feel like it's a whole new beer. It's like when you find when you even like like more domestic beers. Like I mean, it's it's a Mexican import, but I mean it's yeah. pretty pretty prominent here in in the U.S. It's uh, Corona. Yeah. Like when you when you start seeing Corona in cans, you're like, what yeah. the fuck? Whoa! Wait! Whoa. Wait Whoa. a minute! <laughs> like when I when I first saw Pacifico in a 24 ounce can, it blew my mind. Wait, they, I've I've oh okay yeah the the, yeah. the, the tall cans yeah, I've seen, but I've I've I haven't seen a small Pacifico can. I love Pacifico. Oh man! Great beer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But anyways, uh, Golden Road. Uh, you can you guys can connect with them at www.goldenroad.la. Um, they have a Twitter, they have a Facebook, they have an Instagram at Golden Road Brew. Um, I don't know if there's anything for the Flying Dog on the box, probably not. But check out Flying Dog; it's a really good beer. Um, you get an original Ralph Steadman piece with every single twelve ounce brew. Delicious stuff. Um, I, it's good. Get out there. Try some different things. Don't stick with your original Bud Light or Rolling Rock. Yeah, what, what Experience the, some new things. What, what this actually is, is it's called Snake Dog, so it's a, it's a drawing of a, of a snake dog. Like a, like a cat dog, almost, but Hell yeah. it's a snake dog. Um, I mean, I enjoyed the beer. It's definitely getting me on that level. Yeah. If I was drinking these all night... I'd be, I'd be. Oh yeah, I'd be right there. Yeah, and we that's all, that's. The, we all know what happens when I get a little tipsy. Shirt off. Sure, my my take shirt, shirt off. Comes off. The shirt comes off. I have a good time. For those who haven't seen that, oh. there, there, we'll find we'll find a six pack that'll get my shirt <laughs> off. I'm sure. Every viewer will get turned on. What? Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> what? <Wait. laughs> well, I mean, yeah, dude, fucking. Two, for what it seems like, good selections in beer. I mean, that's that's what we made the show about. We love music. Yeah. We love hanging out, talking, just having a good time, and we love drinking beer. So we combined it all three, and uh, you know, music, fucking, hanging out, beer. What better combination? Like I said at the beginning of the show, the perfect trifecta. Stop. I think uh, I feel like um, James Franco said something about a trifecta in Pineapple Express. He's like, it's the perfect trifecta. Tell <laughs> you when he was doing the, the cross uh, cross joint, the cross something. joint. I thought Hurricane season <laughs> was, was over. <laughs> As he's eating the fondue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love when they're just chilling there, and like he's going over there smoking the cross joint. And he's like, he's like, oh, put that shit out. Don't, if, if he sees that shit, it'll never go away. When like someone buzzed him, he's like, he's like, he's like, this this motherfucker's getting a snickle fritz. <laughs> and then and then the dude's friend is like, hey, you got the Percocet? Then he's like, get the fuck out of here with that Percocet shit. No, but Percocet. Who told you I sell, I sell Percocet?